give my man. Lieutenant Bill Ward is accused of using the gun on Mike Fisher last May. Fisher passed out at jail after he was arrested on a DUI charge. He was taken to Martin Memorial Hospital where, according to Ward's attorney, the deputy used the gun because he thought the suspect was only pretending to be unconscious. Ward has been suspended with pay from the force since last month when Fisher initially made the brutality charges. The lesson for some allegations of brutality. Eyewitness News reporter Claudia Shea joins us live from our Treasure Coast Bureau with that story. Claudia? And the indictment against Lieutenant Bill Ward will remain sealed until tomorrow when he will be required to surrender in court. Now, although the specifics of the indictment continue to be a secret, we know that the charge follows allegations that he misused a stun gun on an unconscious man. A stun gun was used May 26th on Mike Dale Fisher. That much is certain. However, the intent of its use the night Fisher was arrested on a DUI charge is the subject of debate. Fisher passed out en route to the jail and was brought to Martin Memorial Hospital. Fisher, who wouldn't talk on camera, says he was unconscious in a hospital bed with both hands handcuffed when Ward zapped him with a stun gun. By contrast, Ward's attorney says one of Fisher's hands was free and he was faking unconsciousness. Did he think at any time that he was only pretending to be unconscious? Yes, and the doctors and the nurse made that conclusion as well. There will be more than enough evidence of that at the trial. Also likely to be discussed during the trial are Fisher's allegations that Lieutenant Ward pulled at a catheter inserted in Fisher and waved an ammonia capsule under his nose. Lieutenant Ward addressed the allegations against him during a press conference last month. I don't feel like I did anything wrong and I want to get on with my life, get on with my job. I like my job and I'm missing it. I can guarantee you we will we'll be entering a plea of not guilty and demanding a speedy trial. And Ward's attorney is asking that that trial begin within 50 days since, as of today, Ward has been suspended without pay. Alan? Claudia, what was the outcome of Fisher's DUI arrest? Well, that trial will be uh, upcoming in the next couple of weeks, but that is the reason his public defender would not let him speak to us on camera. Thanks so much, Claudia. Bill and Ward was using a stun gun against a man in a hospital bed. But as Eyewitness News Treasure Coast reporter Chris Douglas tells us, the deputy's lawyer says his client is being victimized by a wave of anti-police bias. This is a stun gun issued to all area law enforcement officers to be used as a defensive weapon for the officer's protection. It sort of uh, uh, shocks you in, <laughs> and that's a good use of the word, shocks you into submission because... Uh, it, it takes away your energy uh, momentarily. Chief White calls the stun gun a good tool for police because it does no permanent harm. State of Florida versus Bill Ward. But the Martin County Grand Jury is charging Lieutenant Bill Ward with misusing his stun gun by shocking drunk driving suspect Michael Fisher as Fisher lay in a hospital bed. As you all know, this is the year to charge policemen with crime anytime something at all happens, and Lieutenant Ward has fallen in the crack of that, unfortunately, but he'll be proven innocent. Attorney Rubin believes cases like this one in Los Angeles earlier this year, when several officers were videotaped beating an unarmed man, have prejudiced the public against police. And the state attorney's office admits complaints against officers here have gone up. I've had more recently, and that probably is a reaction to, uh, to the times and what's occurred in other locations, but they're handled the same. Phoebus says the evidence is there to charge Lieutenant Ward, only the third lawman to be indicted on any charges in Martin County in the last 15 years. I feel like I am completely innocent of any in all harm on the guy, but uh, that's going to come out in trial. Up to now, Sheriff James Holt has expressed support for Lieutenant Ward and his actions. If this indictment has changed anything, we'll find out Monday. That's when the sheriff has promised a statement on the entire case. In Stewart, Chris Douglas, TV 12, Eyewitness News. Thousands of angry Palm Beach County taxpayers... ...calls us the deputy's attorney claims it is just another unfair case of a citizen taking a cop to court on charges of police brutality. Lieutenant Bill Ward, a veteran Martin County deputy, today was formally charged with illegally using a stun gun on a DUI suspect. I feel like I am completely innocent of any in all harm on the guy, but uh, that's going to come out in trial. There was absolutely no criminal intent. He was just acting to revive a person who was drunk. There's a lot of different ways to try to revive people who are drunk. When, off, when Lieutenant Ward's testimony comes out, you'll hear that. The DUI suspect, Michael Fisher, told the state attorney's office that the deputy used excessive force. 
The lieutenant's attorney blames society for the charges. As you all know, this is the year to charge policemen with crime anytime something at all happens, and Lieutenant Ward has fallen on the crack of that, unfortunately, but he'll be proven innocent. This grand jury, I don't believe, was reacting to any public pressure of any kind. I, this grand jury has done an excellent job throughout their service, and they've had some tough things to do. If the deputy is found guilty of illegally using a stun gun, then he could end up serving time at the Martin County Jail for up to a year. Or by after the judge read the grand jury's indictment in open court, Lieutenant Ward's attorney then immediately declared a not guilty plea on his client's behalf. In Stewart, Dave Bloom, New Center 25. Dave also tells us that the deputy's trial now has been scheduled for October the 7th. Palm Beach millionaire James Sullivan has no permitted harm. State of Florida versus Bill Ward. But the Martin County grand jury is charging Lieutenant Bill Ward with misusing his stun gun by shocking drunk driving suspect Michael Fisher as Fisher lay in a hospital bed. As you all know, this is the year to charge policemen with crime anytime something at all happens, and Lieutenant Ward has fallen on the crack of that, unfortunately, but he'll be proven innocent. Attorney Rubin believes cases like this one in Los Angeles earlier this year, when several officers were videotaped beating an unarmed man, have prejudiced the public against police. And the state attorney's office admits complaints against officers here have gone up. I've had more recently, and that probably is a reaction to, uh, to the times and what's occurred in other locations, but they're handled the same. Phoebus says the evidence is there to charge Lieutenant Ward, only the third lawman to be indicted on any charges in Martin County in the last 15 years. I feel like I am completely innocent of any and all harm on the guy, but uh, that's going to come out in trial. Up to now, Sheriff James Holt has expressed support for Lieutenant Ward and his actions. If this indictment has changed anything, we'll find out Monday. That's when the sheriff has promised a statement on the entire case. In Stewart, Chris Douglas, TV 12, Eyewitness News. Thousands of angry... ...their own job security. City officials said that they could not comment because the case is under litigation. Action 5 News has ref was referred to the attorney representing the city and police department, but he was out of town and unavailable for comment. Kelly? Investigators are preparing to close the case on a bizarre murder-suicide in Port St. Lucie. The judge today after being indicted by a grand jury. As Action 5's Tina Conti tells us, the judge has now revealed the exact charges contained in that sealed indictment. His department once praised him as Officer of the Year, but today Lieutenant Bill Ward wasn't receiving an honor. He was facing charges of police brutality. William R. Ward did unlawfully and knowingly commit a battery upon the person of Michael Fisher. A grand jury charged Ward with four counts of battery for allegedly using a stun gun on Michael Fisher. Fisher reportedly passed out after Ward arrested him for drunk driving in March. He was taken to the hospital, and there, Fisher claims Ward not only used the stun gun on him, but also pulled on his urine catheter and stuck broken ammonia tubes up his nose. Ward's attorney says the deputy was just trying to revive Fisher who he now believes was faking unconsciousness. When you I feel like I am completely innocent of any in, uh, all harm on the guy, but uh, that's going to come out in trial. Ward pleaded not guilty right. to the charges, and his lawyer says there was no criminal intent involved. This is the year to charge policemen with crime anytime something at all happens, and Lieutenant Ward has fallen in the crack of that, unfortunately. This grand jury, I don't believe, was reacting to any public pressure of any kind. I... Sheriff James Holt is currently on vacation and plans to make a statement regarding this case next week. In the meantime, Ward has been suspended with pay pending his trial. A trial which the spokesman here says will be the first in this department's history involving allegations of police brutality. And Stewart, Tina Conti, Action 5 News. Ward was released on his own recognizance. His trial is set for October 7th. Jeff. Tonight, you may be able to help law... So ...they are not the type to brutalize little children. That four-year-old Cassandra Hedrick did this to herself. The Millers do admit, though, to taping Cassandra to a board and keeping her in the bathroom because they say unrestrained she might have killed herself. She started running around bouncing off furniture and walls, and I couldn't get near her. The one time I do remember catching up with her, trying to keep her from running into a wall, she almost bit a finger off of me. She ran all over the house. Nobody could catch her. She... Uh... She just, she beat the hell out of herself. State Attorney Sharon Woods says Cassandra is not an out-of-control child. She is now in a foster home, and Cassandra's mother, who is also charged with child abuse, wants Cassandra back.
The parents of a Palm Beach Gardens high school... And Miller's allegedly restrained the three-year-old by strapping her to a board in the bathroom. Cassandra is now in foster care and has reportedly shown no sign of injuring herself. The spotlight in the Kathy Will... Taylor is standing by live now in Stewart with more on this case. Mark? Well, Laurel, late this afternoon, an attorney for the alleged victim's appointed guardian argued that statements made by defendants Rose Miller and Wesley Miller were psychologically damaging to four-year-old Cassandra Hedrick. She is the alleged victim in this case. He further argued that public comment by the defendants should be restrained until the trial. Wes and Rose Miller called a news conference Tuesday to tell their side of the case, which is that niece Cassandra injured herself because of a psychological disorder. Attorney Steve Rogers put on testimony from the child social worker who said, in fact, the statements could cause problems both socially and psychologically for Cassandra. The Miller's attorney, Michael Rubin, sees the issue differently. It bothers us more than anything else. It's not so much talking or not talking, it's being told that we can or cannot talk. I'm not representing that my clients will or will not make any more statements. We just don't like to be told that they can't make any more statements. That's what's bothering us. The judge sided with Reuben. There is a very heavy burden of proof in a gag order case like this. And he said that these people are, of course, innocent until proven guilty. They have a First Amendment right to speak. Rogers, however, is still concerned about the content of that news conference and has subpoenaed raw videotape from the three television stations that covered it on Tuesday. And we're told there will be a hearing tomorrow to decide whether or not those raw videotapes have to be turned over to Rogers and uh, his team of attorneys. Laurel? All right, Mark, thanks for the update. Mark Kaler reporting live tonight from the news conference. Last Tuesday, Rose and Wesley Miller held the conference to say they were innocent in their child abuse case. The state attorney's office requested copies of the unedited news footage because they believe it may contain a confession to the alleged crime. The Millers are accused of abuse and neglect for allegedly tying their niece to a board in the bathroom. An attorney representing WPTV and WPEC argued that turning the raw footage over would be a violation of First Amendment rights and would have a chilling effect on the news gathering process. Unless the parties appeal, they have until Monday to provide the videotapes. Police in Tampa say the woman who was videotaping... Puzzle. What we do know is that Rose Miller died earlier this evening of a single gunshot wound to the head. She died shortly after being brought to Martin Memorial Hospital and rushed through the emergency room doors. Now, her husband, Wes Miller, was also shot in the head. Uh, he was treated at Martin Memorial Hospital and then moved down to West Palm Beach St. Mary's Hospital, where he is listed in critical condition. Now, the events leading up to this occurred shortly before 5 o'clock this evening. The attorney representing Rose and Wes Miller bolted out of court after receiving a message that his client had just been shot. What happened? They just committed suicide? Yeah. yeah. Who? My clients. Where are they? My clients just committed suicide. Where Bill, Bill, come here. Where are they? They're back there with Teddy. The victims were not dead, but rather barely clutching to life when they were found behind Reuben's law office. Wes Miller was slumped in his wheelchair. His wife sprawled on the ground nearby. Both victims have been shot through the mouth and lost a considerable amount of blood. It is not clear who actually pulled the trigger, but a partner in the law firm where Reuben works says the gunshots were fired about 20 seconds apart. This is going to take a lot of work. We have a lot of detectives working it. We have the lieutenant here. We had the chief out here. We have a lot of people out here investigating. It's going to take a while. A small caliber gun was found at the scene. Police scoured the parking lot for other evidence, including the bullets which exited the victims' heads. According to attorney Rubin, the Millers were scheduled to be represented in court at 5 o'clock on what Rubin believed was to be a bond revocation hearing. 
Now, Curtin Elizabeth, the uh, state attorney's office is keeping very tight-lipped about that hearing earlier this evening, but we spoke with one of the key players in the abuse investigation, and he gave us some very shocking information. Kevin Crawley, a neighbor of the Millers, was one of the first people to notify HRS of the alleged child abuse. We were told that the Martin County Sheriff's Office called him yesterday, called him over to the Sheriff's Office, and told him that the Millers had put a hit out on him and for him not to return home. They notified him later on and said that the Millers actually tried to recruit an undercover person who had been working with the Sheriff's Office and that at that point it probably would be safe to return home. But that family had been uh, in fear, thinking that the Millers were trying to kill them. Just one more uh, ironic twist in this very mysterious story. Curtin Elizabeth? I know you're keeping tabs on the news conference uh, going on inside the police department there, so keep us updated. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Claudia Shea, for that live report. This is considered a first report. More about this case. Claudia, what did you learn? Well, that's right, Kurt. I'm still standing outside of the uh, Stewart Police Department. Investigators, unfortunately, did not shed a whole lot of new light on this investigation. They are still trying to piece together the clues of this double shooting. Now, Rose and Wes Miller were found shot moments before they were to appear in Martin County Court for a possible bond revocation hearing. Now, they were found in the parking lot of their attorney, which is right across the street from the Martin County Courthouse. Rose Miller died of a single gunshot wound through her head. Her husband, Wes Miller, is in critical condition. He was transported from Martin Memorial Hospital down to West Palm Beach to St. Mary's Hospital, where he is being treated in the trauma unit. The Millers had been charged with abusing their four-year-old niece, Cassandra, last July, but the couple had been free on bond since then. Police say this appears to be a double suicide attempt, but at this point, Curtin Elizabeth, they have not officially ruled it that. Claudia, have they said when they're going to say more about this? They are keeping very, very tight-lipped about this, Kurt. They're still searching for clues, looking for evidence. I might also say that the state attorney's office is also keeping very tight-lipped about this. You may be curious about that bond revocation hearing. We got a call from one of the original informants who tipped off police about the alleged abuse of Cassandra, and he said that the sheriff's office called him yesterday and said the Millers tried to put out a hit on his life. So, uh... Apparently, that was why the bond hearing was being called today. But, again, we're trying to piece together all of these clues. Very quickly, Claudia, can you tell us about the little girl? Where is she? Is she okay? Does she know anything about all of this? The little girl was three years old at the time of the abuse. She's four years old now. She has been placed in a foster home. Uh, she's under the care of H HRS right now. And uh, the Miller said that all of these um, injuries had been self-inflicted by the little girl, but there has been no sign of self-infliction since she has been taken out of the custody of her aunt and uncle's care. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claudia. Now let's uh, turn in one more time with John Mann together in a double shooting investigation. It all happened just before 5 o'clock. Yards from the Martin County Courthouse where a hearing was scheduled in an alleged child abuse case. Bill Alexander joins us live now from our newsroom with a story, Bill. Rose and Wesley Miller were already in deep trouble. They were the subject of a brutal child abuse case. Now, they were supposed to be in court Tuesday afternoon, but they never made it. Within 100 yards of the Martin County Courthouse, moments before they were to appear before a circuit judge, Rose and Wesley Miller were shot. There was one person on the ground with blood and the ambulance people were putting him on the cot. Their attorney who was waiting for them in court was delivered a message saying his clients had been gunned down. You guys, I need you to stay out here, all right? Although police can't confirm it, eyewitnesses say the woman shot her wheelchair-ridden husband and then herself. She died just before surgery and he's in extremely critical condition. Now the Millers were scheduled for a bond revocation hearing in a child abuse case at 5 o'clock. At 10 minutes to 5, a note was brought into the courtroom telling the defense attorney his clients had been shot. The Millers were suspects in a brutal alleged child abuse case involving their four-year-old niece. They had maintained all along the girl's wounds seen here were self-inflicted. But they did admit to tying her down on occasions when she was unruly. Tuesday, they faced having bond revoked because of allegations of criminal activity related to the case involving potential witnesses. The state filed a motion uh, to revoke the bond based upon the fact that they might have been soliciting to commit some type of a crime. That's what's alleged in the state's motion. Stewart Police and Martin County authorities say several witnesses, including some court employees, still must be questioned. We understand tonight specifically the Millers wanted revenge. They wanted the people who turned them in harmed. And we understand one method they had planned to use was a firebomb to firebomb their neighbor's home.
Bill, this, is, this appears to be a suicide murder attempt, but that can't be confirmed yet, can it? It can't be confirmed yet because there really isn't a witness who saw the shooting. Police believe this is what happened, but all the people who were on the scene got there after the shooting. A lot of people heard it, but no one really saw it. Thank you, Bill. Bill Alexander reporting. Those of us who live in Florida have a hundred new laws to deal with one of the first people to report alleged abuse by the Millers. He says that he was called over to the Martin County Sheriff's Office yesterday where he was told that the Millers had tried to hire someone to kill him. They told him not to return home, that his life may be in jeopardy. Later turned out that the Millers tried to uh, elicit the help of someone who was working uh, with the undercover investigation with the Sheriff's Office. So uh, Crawley was told that it would be safe to return home. So we're told that those were the circumstances, the reason that the bond revocation hearing was called today. Chandra? All right, thank you, Claudia. Alan? My Witness News Treasure Coast reporter Chris Douglas first broke this story earlier this year, even before the... ...circling her bicycle in her aunt and uncle's driveway for hours at a time. That neighbor, Kevin Crawley, suspected something was wrong. And when he began picking up phone conversations between the aunt and uncle on this police scanner, he was sure of it. In many of the conversations, Rose Miller described abusing her niece. For example, the time Cassandra wiggled free of the boy Rose had tied her to. Uh, how she smacked her around and retied her so tight that she wasn't going to move this time. Using Crawley's taped evidence, police arrested Rose Miller and her husband Wes Miller. As these pictures show, Cassandra was in terrible shape when she was finally rushed to Martin Memorial Hospital. Rose Miller maintained Cassandra was sick and was abusing herself. She just, she ran all over the house. Nobody could catch her. She, um, she, she just, she beat the hell out of herself. But Dr. Heman Gundavda, who treated Cassandra during her three weeks at the hospital, says Cassandra never showed any signs of self-abuse. Do you believe, in your opinion, this girl was abused? Well, from the history and, uh, no, from the symptoms, yes. Cassandra is living in a foster home in Indian Town now. Her doctor says she's a happy, healthy four-year-old with no signs of this terrible abuse that tormented the first years of her life. Chris Douglas, TV 12, Eyewitness News. A 21-month-old Lake Worth youngster is dead in police yesterday. Apparently, two accused child abusers shot themselves just before a court hearing that could have sent them to jail. Eyewitness News Treasure Coast reporter Chris Douglas joins us now live with News Star 12 in Hope Sound. Chris? Alan, this is the home of Rose and Wesley Miller behind me here. Police say that inside that home, the Millers severely abused their four-year-old niece, Cassandra. Now, over here, the neighbors of the uh, Millers taped conversations between Rose and Wes Miller where the Millers allegedly discussed the abuse of Cassandra. Now, the neighbors handed that tape over to police eventually, and uh, police say the Millers got so angry about that, they went out and tried to hire a hitman to kill the Millers and even eventually tried to kill their own lawyer. But luckily for the alleged victims, something went terribly wrong with the Miller's plans. This is what police found after someone heard gunshots in the parking lot of a Stewart Law office. Wesley Miller slumped in his wheelchair, his wife Rose Miller laying at his feet, both shot in the head. Look closely by the officer's left foot, and you'll see the gun police believe was used in the shooting. Attorney Michael Rubin ran from the Martin County Courthouse when he heard about the shootings. My clients just committed suicide. Bill, Bill, come here. Where are they? The Millers were dying behind Rubin's law firm because he represented them until he found out they were furious with him for not handling their case the way they wanted him to. Yesterday afternoon when um, my clients were in the office, I had an extreme premonition that they were armed and presently dangerous. Rubin was apparently right. Soon after he hurried out of his office, the gunshots came. Bullets, police later said, were meant for him. They were going to shoot me outside of the courthouse to leave a message for everybody else and then either shoot themselves or take off and go to Mexico. Police say the Millers were also angry at this man, their neighbor Kevin Crawley, for recording phone conversations on a police scanner and then giving them to authorities. Detectives say the Millers tried to hire a hitman to kill Crawley, but prosecutors found out and were about to ask a judge to put the Millers in jail when the shootings happened. Police strongly suspect double suicide, but they're not 100% sure. We had no eyewitnesses at the crime scene. Um, there's a lot of, they, they have to have, wait for lab results, autopsy reports, gun residue reports to determine exactly what happened. Now, Rose Miller's sister, Vicki Hedrick, told me earlier that her sister gave her a note before the shootings, leaving all her worldly possessions to Vicki Hedrick, another indication, of course, of suicide. Now, uh, Police are treating this as a suicide pact between Rose and Wes Miller, but they tell me they're not truly, completely ruling out any other possibility, uh, including murder. 
a remarkable series of events. Chris Douglas reporting live. Chandra? Now, lawmen think the shooting may have been a murder-suicide pact. Here's New Center 25's Dave Bloom. One day after the double shooting in a parking lot near the Martin County Courthouse, neighbors who knew the couple are shocked that Rose Miller and her husband Wesley would attempt a double suicide. They had bodyguards here. Um, they had uh, brought in attack dogs, security dogs rather. They were shot only minutes before an emergency hearing on their ongoing child abuse case. Allegations that the Millers physically abused their four-year-old niece. With a bullet lodged in his brain, Wesley Miller had surgery, and as remarkable as it may seem, his condition has improved. A police officer first on the scene said he took the gun out of Wesley Miller's hand and put the revolver on the ground. Cops say they had uncovered a murder plot involving the Millers, that the Millers planned to kill their next-door neighbors who first notified police of the alleged child abuse. As for neighbors down the block, they've been fearful that gunfire would erupt any time as a neighborhood feud was heating up. You never know what's behind a person's mind, do you? What can I say? I was worried that perhaps something would escalate and perhaps shots would be fired. The children live up and down the street here. I was afraid children would get hurt. Dave Bloom, New Center 25, Nightcast. The bullet's been removed from Miller's head, but doctors say it's still too soon to tell if he'll make a full recovery. A North Miami Beach high charge with child abuse played out what police suspect to be a suicide pact. Rose Miller is dead. Her husband, Wesley, is clinging to life. For the latest on the investigation, we go live to Eyewitness News reporter Claudia Shea at the Stewart Police Department. Claudia? Well, Al, the Stewart Police Department is examining evidence that detectives have collected so far, including an apparent suicide note. That letter was written by Rose Miller and given to her sister, Vicki Hedrick, yesterday. Now, Hedrick is the mother of four-year-old Cassandra, the little girl the Millers are charged with abusing. According to an eyewitness, Vicki Hedrick was talking with the Millers behind their attorney's office moments before her sister and brother-in-law were shot. The eyewitness says she saw Vicki kiss Wesley goodbye and drive off. Vicki later said Rose slipped her a note, but told her not to read it until later that night after the Millers scheduled Vaughn revocation hearing. That hearing never happened. The Millers were shot just before they were to appear in court. The Millers attorney says his client's bond was going to be revoked because they allegedly attempted to hire a hitman to kill his neighbors. Attorney Rubin tipped off the prosecution, then feared for his own life. Yesterday afternoon when um, my clients were in the office, I had an extreme premonition that they were armed and presently dangerous. Um, at that point, I left. I informed some of the office staff they were dangerous. Stay away from them. Reuben waited for his clients in court. He learned of the shootings five minutes before the revocation hearing was to begin. Now, according to the state attorney's office, Bond was going to be revoked because the Millers allegedly contacted Reuben's investigator, seen here on the left, about hiring a hitman. Authorities say the Millers plotted to firebomb this home, owned by next-door neighbors Kevin and Terry Crawley. The Crawleys fled their home tonight. They say they still don't feel safe, even though Rose Miller is dead and Wes hospitalized. A feud between the two families escalated several months ago when Kevin Crawley presented health care workers with evidence that little Cassandra Hedrick was being abused by the Millers. The Millers told officials and Eyewitness News that all of the child's wounds were self-inflicted. But tonight, members of Miller's family, including Vicki Hedrick, refused to comment. We don't want to be bothered. We've got enough grief in this family to last us for a long time. Wesley Miller was operated on today at St. Mary's Hospital in West Palm Beach, where doctors removed a bullet that had been lodged in his brain. His condition has been upgraded from critical to serious. Now, according to the state attorney's office, if he survives, he will still face the child abuse charges and possibly a new charge of homicide if it is determined that he had been holding...